Hello and welcome to the Friday, July 19th, 2024 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Washington, D.C. Well, it's uh, the day of the quarter again for the quarterly critical patch update from Oracle. This time Oracle patches 386 vulnerabilities. Pretty normal to see that large of a number of vulnerabilities being patched across the large inventory of different Oracle applications. I sort of skimmed it, uh, can't really summarize all 386 vulnerabilities. The highest CVSS score that I've seen was 9.8. There are a number of open source vulnerabilities that have been close, disclosed prior to today so this is definitely something that you do want to apply relatively quickly what vulnerability stuck out a little bit not because of severity but because multiple products are affected well again a 9.8 css score but uh, this is uh really an update of uh, trusted root certificates. The Certify collection, that's sort of a standard open source collection that you often see in Python and the like, it has removed uh, the eTakra root certificates because that particular sort of authority had some issues that was actually removed about a year ago. And now Oracle is updating the root certificates. This is Unlikely going to have an impact, but just in case, be aware, if you're using any Itakra certificates, uh, that may actually then lead to them no longer being trusted. And Microsoft this week announced that it has made available now a public preview for inbound SMTP, Dane, and DNSSEC. Dane is a protocol that allows you to exchange a TLS key information over DNS. It's supposed to help with some downgrade and uh, TLS machine in the middle attacks. Now, in order to use Dane, you first need to implement DNSSEC. That's why these two protocols always go together. Microsoft has actually already implemented as of February, I believe, the outbound part where they are publishing these Dane records. Dane is one of those little bit forgotten protocols. It has been around for quite a while. I have not seen sort of huge implementations really take off of Dane, but now with Microsoft sort of getting fully behind this protocol, well, uh, maybe there's a chance that we'll see a larger adoption. You implementing Dane on your own mail server and for your own domain may actually also improve your reputation rating with Microsoft's mail servers. That's often a tricky issue in particular if you are sending email from a smaller system, not from one of those large email providers. The rollout will happen sort of in stages starting in August. You'll see some of the inbound SMTP Dane and DNSSEC reports in the Exchange Admin Center. Then later in October, it will become general available. Right now, it's just in the public preview. And then they will start rolling it out across all Outlook domains by the end of the year. And a group of several researchers from universities in the US and Canada have published a paper with uh, ideas regarding some novel attacks against uh, VPNs. They in particular focused on Wireshark and OpenVPN, but the fundamental issue that they're exploiting here is, well, somewhat related to these sort of UDP-based VPNs, but it's really more about connection tracking on the VPN server. The basic the idea here is that if an attacker and the victim are connected to the same VPN server, the attacker may be able to send specific packets to the VPN server that will confuse its connection tracking table and then reroute some traffic that's intended for the victim to the attacker. So it's one of those typical limited uh, resource collision kind of issues. Of course, in a VPN like this, you have to perform NAT from the private IP address to the public IP address that the VPN offers. There is typically less public 
IP addresses, then there are private IP addresses and a limited number of ports to go around for all of the connections. Not sure if this is also somehow affecting IPv6. This may be actually a reason to implement IPv6. There are some other sort of possible solutions that are being put forward in the paper. So far, these solutions have not been yet implemented in any of the affected VPN packages. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again to anybody who came here to Sans Fire and all of those who said hi and uh, identified themselves here as listeners. Thanks and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.